You're still watching ways now. Despite global commitments and efforts, children around the world continue to suffer from the consequences of conflict and are still being used as expendable fuel of war. Armed forces and armed group continue to recruit and use children, tearing them away from their families and communities. Now, cruelly stripping away their dignity and destroying their lives and their future. So insecurity prevents thousands of children from accessing quality education and health care, while schools and hospitals continue to be targeted. Despite being victims, children remain unlawfully in detention for their alleged or actual association with armed forces and groups. So as we mark International Day against the use of um, child soldiers, let's all join hands to protect our children as we win the war against terrorism. Uh, I mean, when I saw this, um, they, it just r reminds me of all the abductions and count, um, multiple abductions that have been going on in the North where you just hear that this number of children have been abducted. I'm sure that, I mean, if not for the popular ones like the Kankara and the Chibok, there are so many children, and I am sure, that are still in custody of, you know, these abductors. They are using them as, um, f um, what's it called, um, fuel for war. So I'm just wondering, I hope our government, you know, will be able to rescue them from the hands of this, because it's so disheartening. I'm a mother. I can't even imagine that I don't know where my child is. It's really heartbreaking. Mm really heartbreaking all right ak so um let me come to you what did you find for us in the news from that sad news so before i share what i have in the news have you observed how the news is just full of terrible news hmm. these days I, I was going through you know my stories to find out what i would find in the news i just couldn't find any light in the light of that let me share my news <laughs> so my news is taken from premium times and it is why I am stepping down from Lagos Judicial Panel Youth Member. So Mrs. Odola, if you remember, is one of the uh, people that were selected to be part of the panel um, that were actually the Lagos Judicial Panel on the police brutality. Mm -hmm. Now, what she did here stood out for me. And if you, I think anyone that has been following what is happening in the news would see that you know the lcc had to continue business as usual and that did not go well with a lot of people let me read her statement here directly it says let me be clear i choose to honor the invitation to represent my peers and to stand as an example that any nigerian has the right to demand accountability of elected government officials and that our institution however flawed can still deliver justice what i will not do is to be part of a cover-up and this was the main reason why she stepped down. Now, the two things for me, the fact that, you know, being on this panel is a good forum, people would see her, she would contribute, but the fact that it is going against what she actually stands for and she can leave that is something that is not common in our clients, mm. you know? So you have things happen um, in political offices, people will still stay mm. with whatever it is, but that she has, the F1 tree, should I put, to separate herself, even though she's given a platform where she'll be noticed, and but she does not want to be part of what she does not believe, is a big one for me. You know, and I think that people people should begin to see this behavior and then maybe there will be a change somewhere down the line. Hopefully. You know, you know interesting thing is this particular girl um, or young lady, she's the one that moved, um, sorry, coordinated the people in, um, at Alausa. So she has what it what was called integrity capital to protect because her integrity is on exactly. the line. A lot of, if, in fact, when she was drafted to be part of this panel, people were worried that she would be compromised. So it is only natural for her to at least prove to the young people that she fought for in the first place to say, you know what, I I am seeing some um, what's it called some some background and disparities yeah disparities yeah. and all of that so i'll rather not so that i don't get my hands stained because it was based on her integrity you know that she was exactly. even selected so the government is using that integrity capital that she has you know to select her so that hopefully whatever outcome comes from this uh, judicial uh, panel people would people would say okay yes because Believe they trust it. some of the people that were drafted on that panel so it is only right for her to do that because that she's this is her being smart enough to protect her integrity capital, yeah. 
Yeah, you rightly said, Uwa, but you know the funny thing, Uwa, not everyone has that, especially if they're in a position where they have other gains. Not everyone considers that. And Absolutely. we have seen people that have turned. But I salute her courage. Mm -hmm. I salute the fact that she wants to protect her integrity and she wants the people that actually back her, support her, to see that she's doing what they sent her to do. Absolutely. Um, do we have Jennifer there now? Oh, I think we're still, we're still having <laughs> trouble with Jennifer. Okay, so my story is quite interesting. So I was just there on my own, oh, no, and I saw <laughs> a video. <laughs> I saw a video on uh, Instagram. The popular Nollywood veteran, um, what's it called? Um, uh, what's his name? Pete Edoche. Pete Edoche. You know, fine, he did a video talking about um, how people have been pressuring him to endorse his son, that he is a good Christian from a very strong Catholic background. You know, he's raised his children in that light and all of that. And so... I mean, so his son, interestingly, his son is an actor, but he wants to go into politics. You know, he is not really interested in politics. That's Peter Doche now saying he's not in, but, you know, he's raised his son well. He's raised all his children well. And, you know, finally, people have been troubling him to, um, to, to endorse his son. So he now did this video, right, endorsing his son for... Now, what, what, what was really interesting and very, very, I don't know how to put it, I don't want to offend people, but I'm so upset, is the position that he's endorsing him for, presidency for 2023, come on. Like, when, I don't know when we would ever learn, right? We have been saying that these things do not just happen on you. So where is the local, I went to, on his page on Instagram to check for maybe, maybe he's done something in his local community. You don't just wake up in a country like Nigeria and say you want to just become a president. Just because, oh, you are young and all of that. Why can't we stop playing this kind of, um, uh, I don't know, I, I'm trying so hard not to use, a, <laughs> you know, an insulting <laughs> word. But it is really annoying. You are a fantastic gentleman. Of course, you've done well in your career. But what is the track record? What have you done in your community? What have you done, you know, to say, you know, what well, people would monster the, and someone, um, all the, they would gather all the people to support you. Would he even be supported in his village? That's the question. And you don't say you want to come out for presidency. Like, it doesn't make any sense. We need people that are serious-minded, you know, in this in this journey for leadership in Nigeria, young people, don't just wake up and say you want to do this. Take a cue from Shinopela. Before he, before, you think maybe Shinopela might not have presidency in his mind, but he went to the, he started from grassroots uh, engagement, community engagement, now did all of that. Now he's, 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 in the, he's in the House of Representatives. That is how you build. You don't just wake up and say you want to become a, a president, for goodness sake. It doesn't, it doesn't happen that way. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I'm, just, maybe I'm just upset. Take a deep breath. <laughs> but what deep do you breath. think? But what you, do you think, Eke? valid points. Jennifer, what do you think? I think Jennifer is here now. Um, I find it really funny. I find it really funny because every time we say we want good, um, we want good governance and somebody just wakes up one day and says oh i want to uh, i want to contest for for the seat of the president how do we vote for you we've not seen anything that you've done we've not seen if you're actually capable you've not shown us anything at all so why should we believe you why should we trust that you can actually deliver on the job and i think that um i think that coming for the president seat is uh -huh. a rich at least show us something. Let's see that, yes, yeah, so, uh, you've done something in so so place. You've delivered at this time. And then some people, at least a handful of people, can actually trust you and say that, oh, I can beat my chest that this man has done something like this. But nothing like that. We've not seen it. Like it and does, all of a sudden, you want us to You know the funny thing? I, mean, I don't even like the line of a good Christian. Don't come with good Christian for us in 2023. We don't want to know whether you're a Christian or <laughs> you're a Muslim. No, that is the as in we should stop all those religious lines, all those um, ethnic lines, cultural lines. Stop yeah. it! Don't come to me and tell me, oh, you have raised him to be a good Christian. We've seen good Christians doing good, uh, very horrible things, right? In the name of Christianity, <laughs> I'm upset, but I don't. I want to calm myself down. Let me take Jennifer's story. Why is angry? <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer, what did you find for us in the news? Okay, so what I saw in the news today, um, strategy should end child marriages bearing fruits this is uh, from the zambian um, president 
So basically, he's saying that he's really fighting for the whole child bride. That he wants, um, according in his words, he said, child marriages and teenage pregnancies are not only a violation of children's rights, but also a danger to their health. These vices impede girls from realizing their full potential. And it is not only to the girls themselves, it also affects the communities. And to be honest, I, I agree with him. I agree with him. I think it is it is high time that um, every country or every community take things like this very serious. We are hoping that Nigeria will take a cue and do the same. I'm tired of hearing about um, a 16 years old girl or a nine years old girl getting married to a man that is 40 years old or 50 years old. What happened to the mature women out there? Have they finished? There are so many of them in the market. They are very single. Why are you going for a child who doesn't even know her left from her right? It makes no sense. Very sad. But I'm really happy that they are, they are, they are going down this route. Absolutely. I wish them the best. I wish them the best as, as well. Thank you so much, ladies. So we're going to take a break now. When we return, we'll have our conversation for today. Stay with us. We'll be right back.